as a church to figuring out how to proclaim the gospel and how to love our neighbor. And that's been what we've been all about as a, as a church these weeks. And, and I think that's a real gift and a real blessing of this time. And, and um, I hope that it's something we carry out of this time and into the future is recognizing uh, what is truly important and what we are called to be together, which is sharing the love of Christ in word by proclaiming the good news about Jesus and indeed, and it's just amazing all the different ways that you are finding, even though we're staying safe at home, unless we happen to be healthcare providers or essential workers, first responders, um, we are finding ways to love our neighbor that are creative and meaningful and impactful. So I'm just so grateful for your leadership that's helping to make that happen. So just a quick review of tonight's uh, agenda. I'm going to ask you some questions about where you're seeing hope, um, what ways you are finding to be resurrection people, that is to love and serve your neighbor, even in the midst of a time of, of, uh, of fear and, and death. How are you supporting your pastor or your rostered minister? We'll just spend a few minutes on those intro questions. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, just give you a heads up on what we're going to be working on on community spiritual care plans with our pastors. I do want to talk about some legal matters uh, uh, in terms of your application for um, the payroll protection program uh, and some more. I've clarified guidance on whether or not a meeting is required. Um, and then uh, I will have time for questions and it'll be quite a bit of time. I think we'll allow a good solid 20 minutes for your questions. But we'll begin with a devotion. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm hoping this works because I haven't really done this before. So I bet you haven't heard that before these last few days, right? We're going to try something and see if it works. Uh, this is a beautiful, maybe you've seen this video, it's called Praise Song for the Pandemic. Uh, this will be our opening devotion and our prayer. It's gorgeous. I, I hope you enjoy it. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us, to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance 
give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. to see that? Good. Place to begin. I think that is uh, one of the great good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a new place to begin. Might we reframe what we are emerging, what we will be emerging from as, as that? as a resurrection promise of a place to begin. So uh, let's uh, jump in here. Um, I see I see Pastor Carla, you're here. Are there any other Synod staff that have hopped on? Just Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you tonight? I'm good. <laughs> good. And how are you, Pastor Carla? You're okay? Good. I'm, I'm good. All right. Well, let's jump in. So here's a question. Uh, what are you seeing that gives you hope right now? It's Easter Monday, season of hope. Um, what do you see? We're, we're, I'm over at Eagle Lake Lutheran Church, and my name is actually Scott, but this is my wife's computer, so don't be confused. Uh, you know, we're seeing um, a lot of people pulling together at the church, trying to make things work. Um, you know, we're a little country church, and technology is something we've never had to dive into before. But God's placed in our in, in our family of church people that understand technology enough to to do an online service, which has been really great. Um, we're seeing a lot of people making phone calls to church members all the time, um, you know, keeping connected with each other. Um, I just, you know, I, I watching the devotion and seeing a place to begin. Um, this is really a place where we as a church body can flourish, even uh, as we sit in the midst of this uncertainty. Um, I think this is our heyday. Mm. Thanks, Scott. Who else? Where are you seeing hope? Don't be shy. <laughs> this is Tom Anderson from Grace Lutheran and Brandon. And yesterday, the fire department drove through town with the Easter Bunny to spread <laughs> community cheer. That's cool. So everybody is kind of pulling together as a community, and that's fun. To yeah, see. that's cool. God shows up in the most unlikely of places sometimes. 
Anyone else? This is Laura Rood from uh, Zion Lutheran in Thief River Falls. And I guess where I've seen hope is in the response to our broadcasts and both on TV and radio to people that are not members, um, but have been touched by, you know, the, the, the broadcasts that we've been able to, to put out there. And um, I think, like you said, God shows up all over and I think he's, he's reaching through us. Um, he's reaching out to people that would normally not be touched by his word. Um, and I think that's such a, that's such a beautiful thing. And, um, I think, you know, to touch on, on Scott's point, I think it's just the beginning. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Laura. This hey, here's a, go ahead. Thank Kelly. you, Bishop. This is Kelly from Central Lutheran in Pelican Rapids. And just to touch on what Laura said, um, we too with, having our services online like with yesterday's worship service i think 850 people viewed our service and we have normal attendance of 55 people so to draw those people in you know to the word of christ it's like who are they and we would not have normally reached that number of people so it's just an awesome thing to do and like you said, this is just the beginning. You know, if we can continue that even to hit half that amount, it's, you know, a continued ministry, what we're doing. So mm, thank you. That's exciting. Thank yeah. you. So uh, another question is, uh, how are we, how are you finding ways to be resurrection people? That is to serve, to serve your neighbors, um, to be of some use in your community, in spite of the fact that, uh, we're all having to stay at home. We've already shared the ways that you're using technology to reach your community. That's gorgeous. What else? How are you finding ways to be of use to your neighbors? Well, who knew that sewing would make a comeback? Hey, right? Amen. <laughs> those, those quilters so sewing are... is, Yes, sewing is cool again. Quilting is cool again. So Yeah, very um, cool. Yeah, but definitely um, all all of the talents within the church um, and people that are not regular members too wanting just wanting to help. They calling the church. How can I? How can I give? I've got this. Do you have any member? You know. So the 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 outpouring of of the community um, and our church members is just it, it's inspiring. Hmm. Um, That's great. I, I think also we go back, I go back to the old way of writing. I have um, a lady yeah. in, a, in a home here in Fargo. Um, I'm from Cormorant Lutheran, and so I go back and forth to uh, Cormorant and Fargo. But uh, I, you know, sending out Christmas, or Christmas, here I am, Easter cards and writing notes. I mean, we have technology of ways of reaching, but somehow when I talked to her today, it was the cards that seem to impress on her. So I think sometimes we just need to go back to that. Those old fashioned tools still work. Yeah, yeah. I'm Laurel at Augustana and Fergus and we sent out packets to our kids for Easter, our Sunday school kids for Easter. And we got a note from one of them back yesterday that their child said, I've never gotten a, a gift from God before. <laughs> and so that was a neat thing that we're, I mean, that's a preschooler that is thinking of things. I mean, that was a highlight for her while we're all struggling. The kids, that was something new and exciting. So that was neat. That's awesome. Thank you for that. This is um, Kelly we've again. Actually, uh, opened up our church to be used for students doing internet schooling. Uh, oh, there's cool. not many places around here that have internet. So um, we opened our church up and I think we've got uh, five to eight kids that come every day for school. So it's nice. one little way to help. That's huge. I'm Gene from First Lutheran in Carlstead. And uh, we had one of our parishioners who's also um, teaches confirmation class, decided that um, 
<clears throat> being as how people couldn't celebrate Easter with their families, that uh, she would try to put together a dinner and deliver to those who couldn't get out and so forth. And uh, uh, a lot of our parishioners chipped in and she ended up, I think she served or delivered 175 meals wow. yesterday. That is awesome. So that was a big outreach in our little community. Wow. Thank you. That's huge. Another thing we did at uh, Cent or are doing at Central Lutheran, we sent out um, Easter packages to our Sunday school kids too, but we also applied for a Thrivent grant um, that we are going to provide blessing boxes to number one, people in our congregation, but anybody in the community that may not have the, you know, in this time that they don't have a job, don't have the means to buy food or paper products or those types of things, we will provide a blessing box to them. You know, our ministerial talked about people that may be too proud to come forward. So we are banding together to provide that for them. Cool. Thank you. So here's a question. How are you supporting your pastor or um, rostered minister, synodic authorized minister, interim pastor, <laughs> deacon? What ways are you finding to be of some support? I know they're under a lot of stress as you, as we all are. And many of them, like many of us, not, I don't say us, not me, like many, many other, others are uh, having to also teach their kids and have their kids at home and trying to, uh, trying to find ways to learning new technologies. Uh, it, it, there's a burden there, I know. How are you finding ways to support them? Well, we've got a, a brand new interim pastor that started with us. His first preaching Sunday was the Sunday before the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And so he's walked into, well, I would consider a quagmire of what do you do now? And um, we've tried to be really um, very open-minded about the ministries he wants to tackle during this time. Um, and giving him an open slate to do whatever he thinks he can do. Um, he's only 50% time, so, um, but he's really stepped forward, especially with helping with the online services and the technology needs we needed there. Um, and he's spent a lot of time on the phone just getting to know our congregation. Uh, but we really feel like it's been a huge blessing for us. It, it, the timing could not have been better for him to come on board. Good. Well, I, I, I know you all are finding ways and, uh, and I know just simply providing a paycheck is huge these days. And so I want to thank you for the ways that you're supporting and encourage you to continue to up, hold up your pastors and deacons and Sam's in prayer, just as they, I know, are holding you in prayer. Uh, thank you for your leadership alongside of them and with them. So, um, I'm just going to move on to our agenda here. So we're going to be working with pastors to help them think through uh, some pastoral care issues for um, the that when some of our communities become uh, overwhelmed with cases of COVID-19. Um, and you'll be invited to enter into that conversation. Uh, specifically to think through matters such as um, if, if our, uh, our healthcare institutions, uh, not just hospitals, but nursing homes or hospice centers are, uh, if one of them has a surge that, that uh, is, that causes them to go beyond their capacity to provide spiritual care through their own resources. What will you make your, your pastor available? Um, are, are they comfortable being available in that context? Is it safe for them? Are they in the high risk group themselves? Those are all some questions to 
that are important for you to think through together because uh, pastors aren't free agents. Um, and uh, they're also not at will employees. And so this will be a, a, a way for you to um, enter together into how are we caring first for each other and then also for our community should uh, one of our institutions be overwhelmed. And uh, um, I think we're doing a great job in Minnesota. Um, I'm really uh, proud of the service of our governor. I think he's doing an excellent job. I think the numbers bear that out. Um, but there is a chance that in some of our communities uh, that we could see a, a surge that does exceed capacity uh, of our spiritual caregivers as well as our, uh, our, our health care providers. So something to be thinking about. That's just a heads up. Um, Want to talk a little bit about uh, the payroll protection program. There's a new video that I think is excellent that I know Chris has sent out and is posted on our website. It's uh, 14 minutes long. It is our, um, our director of domestic mission, our executive director, Phil Hirsch, our uh, general counsel for the ELCA, uh, Tom Cuniff, and also Jeff Tiemann, the president and CEO of Portico, talking about the, the, the CARES Act and specifically the payroll protection program Im implications um, and uh, issues that in an application that it, I think it's a straightforward and simple and I encourage you if you haven't already applied and you're still considering it that's a great resource. So some of the issues are uh, we have congregations that do not have articles of incorporation um, and uh, because they never officially incorporated in the state of Minnesota as a um, not-for-profit which is not absolutely necessary you have your group exemption under the ELCA so there's a couple of things that you can do if you're applying. One is you can email 501c3 at elca.org and they will in about five business days provide you with a letter um, validating your group exemption under the IRS. And so that you'll have that. Um, you can use that with the Secretary of State's office to register your um, church as a, a not-for-profit. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. I'm going to share my screen and go to the Secretary of State's website here. So here it is. This is the Secretary of State of Minnesota. Um, you just go in. I'll, I'll just go back to the home page here. That'll probably be, probably be easier. So you go here. You can go to find a business. And I'll type in Trinity Lutheran Church. We got a lot of those. So you can see here's all the Trinity Lutheran churches that are active. I have active selected. You can select inactive in filing status. And uh, it'll, it'll show you the inactive ones. There's quite a few of those too. Um, but the good news about this is you can go to your details here whether you're active or inactive. And you can find when you did your original filing, you can click that box and you can request, you can request that uh, document. It'll take about five to 10 business days to arrive, um, but the original filing will contain your articles of incorporation. Now, if you never did articles of incorporation, then you'll need to, uh, um, Look to an attorney to draw those up for you. Bishop, I know. I Go ahead. In here. Thank you. Um, Kelly from Central Lutheran. If you do not find your articles of incorporation with the state, you may find them with the county where you reside as well. That's where we were able to find ours. So don't Good give up know. hope there. Thank you. Good to yes. know. Any other wisdom to share in this regard? I know we have people that are probably smarter about this than I am. So um, anybody that would like to offer any words of wisdom or advice there? We did, my, best uh, recommend, my best recommendation is that if you are, if you have a local bank that you work with, go in and talk to them personally or call the banker that's in charge because our bank here was phenomenal. They walked us through the whole thing and we got approved in like two days. Good. That's great. Great to hear. 
I know not, it's not the case for everyone. In some cases, we are you are finding that you're having to educate the lender because it's all new to them. They're not accustomed to making loans to churches for under the SBA. Um, and so that's why we provided all the resources on the website. Hopefully those are useful for that. Um, let's see, let me just check my... We did, we got approved at Augustana, but I talked to our banker today, the SBA, because they're running out of funds, uh, today came out with guidelines that they're starting to maximize people's paycheck loans at 15,000. So if you have not committed with a banker yet, their recommendation was tell anyone else that they should get in touch with the banker as soon as possible so they don't have to get maxed out at 15,000. Thank you. Yes, I, I think there is some belief that Congress will will put more money in that pot, but um, but it's good to, to try to get your application in as early as possible. So uh, guidance on whether meetings are required. Uh, so here's the deal. Most of our ELCA congregation constitutions um, under C12.05C require that a congregational meeting be held for unbudgeted items. Okay, so if your leadership determines that the items being expended under this, uh, that you would use these resources for were budgeted, then a meeting should not be necessary. In most cases, these are budgeted items. These are, this is payroll that you have budgeted. Uh, the, the next paragraph, C1205D, requires uh, that expenditures in excess of receipts be approved by a congregational meeting. If you intend to comply with the terms of the, of the loan, which is basically that you maintain this headcount uh, through, I believe, at least through the period of the loan, um, you will, uh, you, you will your, your expenditures will not exceed your receipts uh, for this, this, this will not be a loan, this will be a grant. And so if the leadership determines that you no, know, our expenditures aren't going to exceed our receipts, then a congregational meeting is not required. Now there may be instances where you decide you'd prefer to have a congregational meeting, in which case we provided some, like once again, there's resources for how to do that on our website and on the ELCA's public health page. So, um, so some things this crisis is underscoring just in terms of administrative matters, um, the importance of keeping your filing status and your, uh, with your uh, up to date with the Secretary of State's office um, that provides an annual reminder to make sure you kind of know where your articles of incorporation are. Um, keeping your constitution and bylaws current, is, this is foot stomping the importance of that and providing updated and accurate information to the Senate office so that we can communicate you, with you. Um, and so I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, but for with your friends and neighbors, um, who you think may not be getting the message, if you could pass that along and help us in that. We're trying, working really hard to expand uh, our database of uh, congregational lay leaders. The good database of our rostered ministers, but not so much, but uh, an improving every day it's getting better, our database of our, of our lay leaders. So that's all I have for agenda items for you. I would like to take the rest of the time, the, however long it may be, um, to entertain any questions, uh, or if there's something that, uh... oh, wait a minute, Chris, there was one other thing, wasn't there, Chris? <laughs> there's that, that uh, document. Yeah, let me find that. File. All right, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. So this is a draft of uh, this is a draft of uh, some guidance that was requested at our last meeting around baptisms, weddings, and funerals. Um, it's hot off the press. 
you know, um, you will, you may, if you, if you're a church junkie and you poke around on synod websites, you're going to find that a lot of bishops provide multiple pages of guidance. You're not going to find that from me or for my staff, because I think that the short and sweet is better. Um, and, and we'll provide links to, uh, where more detail is necessary. Um, so, uh, baptisms, uh, what we're saying here is that in dire emergencies, such as impending death, uh, baptism by laity has always been authorized. It's not an uncommon practice in clinical settings when a pastor can't be present. Um, there's more urgency around baptism in these matters than there, is, than there is or ever will be around Holy Communion because baptism is a singular sacrament. We believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. So it takes on a different kind of urgency. In other circumstances, uh, there might be other extraordinary circumstances, like someone is asking for baptism and it feels desperate for them. Um, that's, a, that's a pastoral or judgment on the part of the, the pastor involved or the officiant. Um, and there's a worship or there's a, there's a, a, a document that we will link to this called Baptism in Extraordinary Circumstances that you can use out of our Evangelical Lutheran worship. Anyone can perform a baptism under those circumstances. In less emergent situations, uh, we recommend that you just wait until it can be celebrated at public worship. Um, but in the meantime, the pastor or the deacon can provide virtual catechesis and instruction to the parents uh, for infants and children and to the sponsors. Uh, or to the candidate, if the candidates are adults or older children. So weddings, um, again, weddings can be postponed and should be uh, until social distancing has lifted. But there are very rare cases of a reason for urgency, such as an impending military deployment. And in those cases, a, a legal wedding can occur in the state of Minnesota. Um, since recorder's offices are closed to the public, you will need to contact the recorder's office virtually or by phone and receive a supplemental form, which you'll fill out um, and return to and get it notarized. And the couple will get it notarized and return it to the office. They'll then send out the certificate of marriage, which is the document that is to be signed by the officiant and the witnesses. So then a wedding could happen in a couple of ways. There could be a small gathering of less than 10 uh, with no one from the high risk category, or uh, probably even safer, it would be a virtual wedding with the officiant, the couple, and at least two witnesses present. And then afterwards, you'll just have to use uh, some, uh, you have to be creative in obtaining those signatures. Uh, and then you can send that along that in, send in the certificate and you'll receive your marriage license. Uh, I imagine there'll be some delay. Funerals. Um, this is a spe specifically thorny pastoral matter for all of us. Um, people will die not mostly not from COVID-19, uh, but some will, uh, but, but there'll be deaths and have been. And then the challenge of how to provide Ministry and pastoral care is there. It's one of the things we're inviting you with this document, other document we're creating to, to think through about how we're doing that as a church. Um, your funeral homes will each have, each have different kinds of guidance. Um, we are aware uh, of guidance that's out there on our ELCA's page around uh, funeral practices um, during a public health crisis. There's a really great document that Chris found from the Minnesota Funeral Directors Association. Um, and then uh, also just in a more holistic way, thinking through the whole uh, ministry and from not only now, but in the future when an actual uh, funeral or memorial service can be conducted. Um, there's a great document from the Minnes Massachusetts Council of Churches that you can check out. And so we're providing this, we'll be working on this and providing it to our rostered ministers and also posting on our website. So I just want to ask if there's questions about that. I'm just going to stop sharing here.
questions or concerns. So one of the things I think to be mindful of is that when we come out of this, we're going to have a lot of delayed grief that uh, you as a church and pastors uh, will be dealing with. Um, we'll have a kind of a backlog of funerals and memorial services, right, that need to happen and there'll be a lot of grieving people and that's, that will, um, that will be an opportunity for the church to shine in its ministry because it's something we're good at. It'll also be uh, a time to be mindful and be especially attentive to the, the spiritual and mental health of your pastor and the others that are involved in that ministry. Um, and I'll do the same as will our staff. Uh, thank you. That, that's it. That is now, that is what I, that is all I have for an agenda. Unless you have questions or comments about that, I'd just like to entertain your questions or hear from you about what would be helpful. Uh, Bishop Tesh, this is Larry Hosluck from uh, Messiah and Rozo. Hey, Larry. How are you? Good. Um, since we are uh, pastorless at this point, uh, you had mentioned last week that you would be uh, uh, providing or making available a sermon for this Sunday's service that we could incorporate into our radio broadcast. Can you give That's me great. some details on that and when it would be available and how we can get it? Yeah, so I, I, I will, um, I was just working on that today and uh, I will be filming the sermon here from my home tomorrow and it'll be available Wednesday morning to Chris and she will, Chris, do you want to talk about how you're going to push that out? Yeah, I will um, put it in our Synod's Northern Lights email, our e-news that comes out on Wednesdays. So there will be a link there. It will um, also live on our YouTube page with a link on our Synod's um, web, on our Synod's resource page, our COVID-19 resource page. Um, and I believe Bishop Bill is going to give me a manuscript as well if that and i'm gonna try to figure out how to do it into an mp3 for those who do the radio um so i'll be trying to learn and how to figure that out so people who need just the audio um can have that so that will be a learning curve so i can't um commit to that but there will be a manuscript and a video for sure yeah so we would appreciate audio if possible yeah well, at, at, at worst case scenarios, you can you can use the audio from the video, but we'll try to. I'll just have a pure MP3 file for you too. I think I know with my Mac, I'm, it's beyond me right now, but I'll probably figure if there's a way to pull the just the, the audio out. So, all right, we thank you for doing that. Uh, our uh, our council and our uh, our lay people are very interested in that. And really appreciate the help. We you know without a pastor we. We need a little help to get us by, and that's uh, that's a, a nice offer. Thank you. You're welcome. And you know, one of the things we're finding um, in these interesting times is that um, people are worshiping all over the place, not just with their own congregation, but with other congregations. And it's it's like um, you know, there's there's no um, no one's being a homie when it comes to. <laughs> to uh, where we get our worship from. And so I, you know, for those congregations, those of you that are without uh, uh, pastoral support right now, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, make use of those resources that are being uh, produced by your neighbors or by all across the synod and uh, shamelessly claim it as your own. Yeah, there is a Google spreadsheet on our resource page with churches um, and how they share their worship services. And I know a couple of churches that don't have a current rostered leader um, picked three of them and said, hey, look at these, but don't forget, you know, we're a community and their council is checking in on their people. But for the worship portion, they're doing that. So there's a Google spreadsheet on our resource page with churches that you can check out. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for, 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 uh, providing a pathway to for the faith practice of generosity. You can take one of those uh, videos from YouTube and if someone uh, 
is a little bit techy in the congregation, they can attach your whatever your online giving platform is, or you can also, there's the US mail, which still works, um, and envelopes, and I even have checks now. Believe it or not, I write, I write checks. Other questions or ways we can be helpful? I guess um, just a quick comment from up here. Our Savior's a thief lake. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, Delray. I'm there. Uh, Delray, Bido. Uh, we had a council meeting last Monday, so I wasn't able to attend this, but um, we were all commenting on how Christ is moving globally. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it, it's amazing. Um, I enjoy the Facebook, you know, we're shut in out here and, um, I've got so many friends that surprised me at how Christ come back into their lives. It's just, uh, it's flattering and a little overwhelming, but for sure it's, it's a, it's a serious movement. And I just enjoyed listening to everybody tonight say how it's moving. You know, we're a little community, little congregation out in the brush here. Um, same thing. We're getting a lot of people following the church. We do a Wednesday evening, obviously in Lent here, but, and then also we put on our Sunday, uh, Sunday evening out of Thief River. So anyway, I was going to say it's, it's, uh, there's a serious movement and it's uh, unfortunate to be able to say that I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. It's, it's, pretty, it's a blessing. <laughs> so thank you. I, I know what you mean. I think I, I've, I've often, I felt gratitude even in the midst of this time we're moving through and it's, it's, uh, I feel grateful, privileged to, to, to see the church and see at this time and see what God is doing, what Christ is up to. The text for this Sunday is Jesus finding the disciples in their locked room. Well, um, there's a lot of that going on these days. Anything else? I had a question today. Is it from someone on our altar guild staff or volunteers, is it important to keep the colors in our sanctuary? We're, we're going in with another church, so we're not worshiping from our sanctuary at all right now, but to change out the altar cloths with the seasons and the colors, is that something that should continue even though no one's in our building, or is that not something that needs to be done right now? I just, I don't know what what the tradition, I, I understand the tradition, but if there's no one there, is that an important thing to keep doing right now? Yeah, no, it's not. I think, um, you know, those colors are there for the benefit of worshipers to, uh, to, um, you know, to, to, to be mindful of the season of the year. And since the worshipers aren't there, um, it's not necessary. So in this case, when the tree falls in the woods, nobody's there to hear it. So it doesn't actually fall in the woods. <laughs> Good question, though. You know, Laurel, one thing, there might be somebody that feels like that's their ministry and they want to do it, you know, and if they can do it safely and it's something they can do and feel useful for the sake of God's kingdom, more power to them. Right, and I think that's how our Christ candle will be. I think that person feels like that's an important thing, and mm -hmm. I think they're probably going to take that on individually. Yeah, I, I think that's that's okay. Yeah, we've had the the same in in Thief River, and that is that is how the person you know gives back and, and ministers back to the church, and um, very very adamant that 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 they keep that tradition and absolutely honored that. So, well, and you know, then that can be you know if that is happening, and if it's not, it, like I said, it's okay. It doesn't have to happen. But if there's somebody that that's their ministry and they want to keep doing it, then I would try to find a way to let the congregation know that our church is still decorated for the season, even though we're not physically there. Other questions or thoughts? Well, hearing none, I want to say thank you again 
for your good work, uh, for your faithfulness, and uh, keep 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 praying for us, and we'll keep praying for you. We'll pray for each other. We are ninety thousand Christians across northwestern Minnesota. Ninety thousand of us, uh, two hundred and twenty-three worshiping communities, and uh, uh, we are journeying through this time together. We're church together. So God's peace be with you. I'm going to ask Pastor Carla, you're right next to me up there. Would you be willing to close us in prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose again to new life. We give thanks for the love that you send to us through him and by the power of the Holy Spirit a love that is uh, ever flowing and overflowing. We thank you for these gifts and we ask that these gifts empower us to continue to share your word, to consider um, the concerns of our neighbors, to reach out to them um, as they are in need, to find creative ways to continue to share your gospel day by day. We know that you are with all those who are suffering, and we ask for your healing and steadfast, loving and merciful presence. We pray for our healthcare workers, especially as they um, place themselves in harm's way in order to care for those who are ill. We thank you for good governance, and we ask that um, you continue to be with our leaders across the country and that we can find ways to continue to mitigate this pandemic and continue to find ways to, as things come to healing, as we can find ways to safely open the country back up. We ask your blessings upon these leaders of these churches, empower them, enrich them, and just continue to be with them in your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 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 Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bishop Bill. Christina. Yep, I'm still here. Okay. Do you know if Bishop Bill needs help recording tomorrow at all? I think he was just going to do it from home with his phone. So I think he, I think he'll be good. Okay. If he <laughs> but does, thank you, Kelly. If he does, do you want to let me know? You know, cause sure. I'm, just, I'm just down from him. So. Okay. If Sounds good. Does, I'll let me know. I'll, I'll shoot him a text okay. and, and offer it. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Bless Take you. care. Yeah. Yep. Bye.